Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Kakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone of Ruel. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and Ababa Ball. Back in with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. Lord, the world of this video is edifying. And without further ado, just going to get right into it through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. All right. And the title of this lesson will be uh, Through the Spirit, Lord Willing. Do we seek to please men? All right. Do we seek to please men? You know, life, uh, you know, as uh, Jake growing up in Babylon, you know, most Jakes, what do they do? They, do they do everything in strife and vain glory. You know, Jake is doing things to stunt, you know, to try to flex. But that's not the will of Yahweh Bashmi al Shai. And let me get the scripture real quick to back that up. And I'm guilty of this. You know, I've done this before. And sometimes I even have to catch myself when I do it now, you know. But nonetheless, you know, Yahweh Shai, when he was on the scene, he wasn't looking for clout, man. All right. The scriptures say that Yahweh Shai made himself of no reputation, you know. So, well, I'll get that, Lord willing. I'll get that scripture. But let me read this. This is Galatians chapter 5 and verse 26. It says, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another. Envying one another, you know, so the point that I wanted to touch on was vain glory, man. All right, we don't want to be doing things in vain glory, okay? And then this one, um, Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 1 If there be therefore any consolation in Masiach, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind all right and that's and that's a cut to you, you different unity camps out there you know all you different camps who want to uh get in unity and hit the highways and byways but you guys all preach different doctrines that's going off the scripture just proved that okay and there's more scriptures to prove that as well all right verse three here's the point let nothing be done through strife or vain glory all right so you don't want to do anything through strife you know Okay, now there's times where you have to do things where it's quote unquote strife, but it's in righteousness, you know, like for instance, the scriptures say, um, the scriptures say, uh, contend for the faith, you know, so that's technically strife, but it's in righteousness. All right. And when, and when you go into that word contend, it means to fight. All right. As well, um, the scriptures talk about how, you know, the upright strive. Against the wicked, roughly paraphrasing. Let me see. I think it's in Proverbs. I'm I'm roughly paraphrasing it, but um, let me see. Keep uh, let's see if I can find that scripture. Give me one sec, Bob. Sure. All right, here it is. Proverbs twenty-eight and four. It says, "They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them." Yeah. So sometimes. You might have to bump heads with Jake, okay? You know, sometimes Jake will come out on the highways and byways, talk shit, scoff, and we might have to bump heads, like the Lord said, make our foreheads strong against their foreheads. So sometimes, you know, you, you do things in strife, but it's in righteousness, you know, so it's acceptable, all right? Because strife technically means just to be at a disagreement with somebody or to fight with somebody, all right? So it says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, all right? But in loneliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves, okay? So you're supposed to do things in lowliness of mind, you know, and you should be esteeming brothers better than yourselves, you know, not trying to uh, promote yourself over brethren, but rather promote brethren over you, okay? Verse 4, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So like I said earlier, don't be looking to promote yourself, looking to promote brothers. And it ain't nothing wrong with promoting yourself, all right, because the scriptures say there's a time and place for everything. But, you know, make sure that you're putting a brother on before you put yourself on. All right. You know, um, like, for instance, I use this analogy often when I'm talking about the scripture. But let's just say, you know, there is a couple slices of pizza in the box. All right. You look to make sure that that brother gets a slice of pizza before you do. You know what I'm saying? And that's all. Go and that all goes into taking the low as well, which is another lesson. But nonetheless, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Okay? 
who being in the form of the powers, or the form of God, but also is Allah Hayim, because Yahweh Shai, he's made in the image of the Most High, and, uh, you know, the, he has that glorified body, so, so who being in the form of uh, the Most High, or the powers, thought it not Robert to be equal with the powers, but made himself of no reputation, okay? It says, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. All right, so that's the point of that right there. Yahweh Shai made himself of no reputation. So when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, he wasn't looking for clout or vain glory. All right, it says he made himself of no reputation. And that was also prophecy about Yahweh Shai. Because a lot of times when Yahweh Shai would heal someone, what would he say? He would say, tell no man what I did unto you. You know, roughly paraphrasing. All right, and he would hide himself in the crowds. You know, he would withdraw himself from large crowds, so on and so forth. Because Yahweh Shai understood what his mission was, man. And it's the same thing with us here in this ministry. We have to understand what our mission is, man. Okay? We are known as the Lord's hidden ones, you know? So on this side, we're not looking for our glory. Okay? Because scriptures say the fashion of this world passes away. So this world is temporal. So why would we be looking for glory on this side? You know, that's just us really selling ourselves short. All right? But nonetheless, this is Isaiah 42, starting at verse 1. Behold, my servant whom I uphold. Mine elect in whom I so delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And that's referring to Yahweh Shai. All right. And that judgment that he's bringing to the Gentiles is referring to the Israelite foreigners who were in a Gentile state of mind. Just like how we were prior to us coming to this truth. You know, we were calling ourselves, you know, Haitians, Dominicans, you know, Jamaicans, so on and so forth. That's us being in a Gentile state of mind. All right. But really, you know, we're Levi, Simeon, Benjamin. So on and so forth. All right, verse 2. It says, He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Okay, meaning what? That when Yahweh was on the scene, he wasn't looking to uh, be recognized by men. Okay? So that was the point on that right there. You know, so we don't seek to please men. We don't look for man's approval. We look for the approval of Yahweh Shah. All right? And we're not looking. And a lot, and a lot of times that really just stems back through strife and vain glory, you know, mainly vain glory. Nonetheless, this is Galatians chapter 1, starting at verse 10. It says, For do I not persuade men, or Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Mashiach. Yeah, and why is that? Because if you're only looking about pleasing men, then that means that everybody's going to be your friend. All right, but in this truth, you're going to lose friends. You're going to make enemies. Not because you want to, but because certain people are wicked and they don't resonate with the spirit of the Lord. So when they see the spirit of the Lord upon you, that drives them to separate you from their company. As the scriptures say, blessed are ye when men shall separate you from their company. Also, the scriptures say, blessed are you. When are they, the scriptures actually say, um, woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so their fathers did unto the false prophets. So being a man of the Lord, Lord willing, we be those men. All right. It's not about a popularity contest. You know, people are not going to like you. And that's perfectly fine because that's how you know that you're on the right track, man. All right. Not everybody's supposed to like you because not everybody is down with the spirit of Yahweh Shemel Shah. The only approval of men that you should really be worried about is the brothers, you know. But even that comes to a certain limit. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes. Because at the same time, brothers are still men, you know, so sometimes something might offend a brother, you know, but a brother might be moving in the flesh. You know, it happens. It happens, man. You know, we're all in the flesh at the end of the day. OK, but nonetheless, you know, the main approval that we should be seeking is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Now, let me go ahead and get this next scripture. This is Colossians chapter three. And. Uh. Found that verse 22. It's like, yeah. It's Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse um, 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing the most high. Yeah. Okay, and that's why brothers need to be in subjection to each other and understand order, you know, within the body. Okay, because there's levels to this and the scriptures say let all things be done decently and in order you know so if a brother gives you an order through the spirit all right obey your masters in the flesh 
or even when you're on the plantation, you know, you do your job and you get out of there. All right. Not not to be a man pleaser, you know, but for the fear of Yahweh Bashem al Shah. Because like we read earlier, do we seek to please men? You know, verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Yeah, when we're on the highways and byways, we're doing it for the Lord and for ourselves as well because we, we're saving ourselves, you know, and for those who hear us, those who listen to this word, all right? But as well, it says, and not unto men. So it's not about man, what man thinks. It's about what you have about Shemel Okay, verse 24, knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Mashiach. Okay, right. And what's the reward of the inheritance? The kingdom. Okay. And a part of that inheritance is the heathen. Like it says in Psalms, the second chapter, ask of me and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. So we're going to rule over our oppressors, man. All right. One day we're going to be laid up in the kingdom, getting our back rubbed by a little Moabite woman. You know, this is what's coming to us, man. All because why? We, we labored for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You know, and that's just, that's just one of the least things that we're going to receive, man. The Lord, he's about to really tap into a bunch of different glory, you know, on our behalf, man. Because we served Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah the first go around. All right. It's you. Verse 25. It says, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. Yeah, and that's plain and simple. All right, and no respect of persons, meaning that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is not a respect of persons, man. If he chastised his own son, our Lord Yahweh Shai, how much more us, man? Okay? Yahweh Shai said it himself, the servant is not greater than his Lord. You know? Nonetheless, let's go to Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 1. Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. And you see that a lot of times among celebrities. You know, they do their arms before men, okay? They'll get on Instagram or social media, and they'll take videos and be like, yeah, I just gave this homeless dude some shoes, man. Feel so good to give back to the community. That's them doing their arms before men, okay? It says, and it said it right there, otherwise you have no reward of your father which is in heaven. So if you're doing things to be seen of men, to get praise of men, oh, you're such a good person, da 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 that's your reward. <laughs> you're not going to get your reward from Yahweh Bashim al Shai. You already got your consolation from the praise of men. All right. So, hey, when you weighed in the balance, which, which one would you rather? A reward from Yahweh Bashim al Shai or a reward from men? Okay. Let you be the judge. Verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be, have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Okay? So when you give an alm, all right, you don't need to sound an alarm or a trumpet. Just do it low key. Okay? And our Lord Yahweh Shai taught us that. Because a lot of times after he healed somebody, he would tell them what? Don't tell anybody I healed you. You know, so on and so forth, man. Which was like we read earlier. It was prophecy, but that was a form of him being low key with his arms. Okay? You do, a, you do a brother a favor, a brother might spot you, you know, some money, or you might spot a brother some money, rather. Okay, you don't got to go and tell the rest of the brothers in the camp, oh, yeah, I gave that brother $10. You know what I'm saying? Nah, okay? That, let that be between Yahweh Bashim al Shai, you and that brother. All right? Verse 4, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Verse 5, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you that they have the reward. And this is talking about when you pray. This is not talking about when you hit the highways and byways, man. Okay, because Yahweh Shai instructed us himself, telling us to go out into the highways and hedges that his house may be filled. Okay, and also the scriptures talk about wisdom cries within the streets, so on and so forth. Lord said, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. All right. So that's not talking about praying, okay? It's like it. That's not talking about preaching on the streets. It's talking about praying. When you're praying, you're not supposed to be doing it to be seen of men, you know? It says, but when it says, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Yeah. And there's a song, um... And, you know, Jake in the song, he said, we, we all had a dream 
but we prayed individually, you know? So says the spirit, you know, Jake didn't even know what he said. Well, he must have known or he could have not have known. But nonetheless, what he said was scriptural, man. All right. What's our quote unquote dream? What's our goal? All right. Our goal is the kingdom of heaven. OK, but we all pray individually to Yahweh Shai for our own endeavors and as well for the body, man. All right. Now, there might be times where brothers might pray as a collective, you know, for a certain thing, like you might be throwing a curse upon somebody or even a blessing. You know, might be an anointing a brother or something of that nature, you know, but, you know, still, okay, you're not doing it to be seen of men, you know, nonetheless, um, let me skip down to, I'll just keep, I'll just read it through, verse 7, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking, be ye not therefore be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. All right. Verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you also. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Yeah, so when you're fasting, okay, you're not supposed to make it seem like you're fasting. You're supposed to make it look like you're not fasting. All right? Jake, Jake know how to yikwab. Jake know how to supplant. You know, so it's easy for you to make it look like you're not fasting, man. All right. When you're on a fast, don't tell anybody you're fasting. If someone asks you, you're hungry or you want some food, just say, no, thank you. I'm good. You know, just say I'm good or no, thank you. All right. Don't tell anybody, well, I'm, I'm on a fast right now. OK, now, you know, try your best. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes motherfucker might ask you, ask you directly. Are you on a fast? You know, hey. Try your best, man. Try your best to uh, supplant, okay, in righteousness, you know. That happens sometimes, you know. Your mom might ask you, are you fasting right now, you know. But, hey, you know. Nonetheless, it says, uh, but thou, Saki, I'll read that again. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. Okay? It says, that thou appear not unto men at, to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret, that thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. All right? And that's the point of that right there. So the reason why I pulled that scripture out through the spirit is because that's going back to, you know, not doing things in vain glory. Okay? We're not looking for the approval or the praise of men. Okay, that shit does not matter at the end of the day because men are fickle. Okay, and men are controlled to Yahweh Bashim al Shai. It's nothing for the Lord to put the spirit on a man to betray you, turn his back on you, so on and so forth, man. That's why we don't put our trust in man. We put our trust in Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Now, don't get it wrong, you know, we do confide in brothers and stuff like that, but ultimately our trust is in Yahweh Bashim al Shai. We don't look for man as a support system. You know, we look for Yahweh Bashim al Shai as a support system, which the Lord can work through a man. But nonetheless, we still trust in the Lord. We don't put our trust or our confidence in man. All right? So there's no point in seeking their approval. Okay? Especially people in the world. All right? I give a fuck about anybody's opinion in the world. These niggas still be eating shrimp, pork, crab, and lobster. I can give a damn about their opinion, man. All right? Because they don't even care about the opinion of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. So what does their opinion matter? You know? Anyways, now if it's profitable, you know what I'm saying, you can consider it, but that shit don't matter at the end of the day, man. You are to only really worry about if you how if you how about Shemal Shai is okay with what you're doing. You know? It says verses Sirach or Ecclesiastes 23, starting at verse 19. Such a man only fear of the eyes of men, and know if not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. 
Now, when you read this in context, this is talking about a man committing adultery in secret. But nonetheless, this applies to the lesson, verse 19 in particular, because it says, such a man only fear of the eyes of men, meaning you only do certain things in front of men, you know, because you're worried about what man thinks, you know, but you don't, but what you fail to realize is that the Lord can see you. <laughs> the Lord can see you if you're in a pitch black room, sealed type pitch black room, soundproof room, you know, no light in it. You're just full of darkness and, and soundproof. No one can hear you. No one can see you. Well, guess what? The Lord can hear you. The Lord can see you, man. So, you know, there's no point to uh, do things in the sight of men. You know, feign yourself like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm all about you. How about you not shy? But then behind closed doors, you're not. <laughs> the Lord sees that, man. You can fool man. All right. And even to a certain degree, you know, you, you can't even really fool man, you know, because one thing that's hard to fake is sincerity. You know, that's hard to fake. Some people can get away with it. But when the Lord is dealing, when the Lord's spirit is dealing, a lot of times, brothers can see through shit. Brothers, in the spirit, the Lord will reveal to a brother, hey, this man full of shit, you know? The Lord, the Lord could put the spirit on a man to peep that type of stuff. That's why Yahushai knew that the scribes and Pharisees were full of shit, okay? A lot of times, what would he say? Yahushai knowing their thoughts. Yahushai knowing in his heart, you know? Or would say, uh, Yahushai would say back to them, why seek ye to tempt me, you hypocrites? You know, so on and so forth. Yahushai knew that the scribes and Pharisees was full of shit, man. All right, and sometimes brothers can even peep that you're full of shit. All right, why? Because the Spirit of the Lord reveals it. But nonetheless, if a man can do that, how much more you have about Shemuel Shai? The Lord knows all the thoughts you're thinking in your head. The Lord knows what you say. The Lord can hear all that, man. The Lord can see everything you're doing. So there's no point to uh to try to uh fake fake the funk, so to speak, man. Because at the end of the day, you how about Shemuel Shai really knows what's up. You know, so. We want to do things to please Yahweh Bashem Al Shai and not as man pleasers. You know, this is Sharaka Ecclesiastes 23 and 20. As a matter of fact, let me get this. Let me get this real quick. I'm going to get this scripture. All right. To back up what I said. Uh, bear with me. Babusha. Let me see. Let me see. All right, this is First Kings chapter fourteen. Let me start at verse one. It says, "At that time, Abijah, or Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick, and Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam, and get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is Ahijah, the prophet." which told me that I should be king over this people. Okay, so if Jeroboam's telling his woman to disguise herself that, she, you know, she doesn't look like the wife of Jeroboam, right? Now, peep this, verse 3. And take with thee ten loaves and, cr and cracknels and a cruise of honey and go to him. He shall tell thee what shall become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so and arose and went to Shiloh and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see for his eyes were set by reason of his age. So he, he was losing his eyesight and he couldn't see well, okay? Because he was getting up in age. So watch this, verse five. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, for it shall be when she cometh in that she feign herself to be another woman. And it was so when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came in at the door that he said, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam. Why feignest thou thyself to be another? For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. Okay, so in her in her spirit, you can extrapolate this, you know, but in her spirit, she was probably like, What the fuck? You know? <laughs> she thought that she had the best disguise. You know, Eve, too, the scriptures say there is no wickedness. The scriptures say, give me any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. You know, so, you know, Eve, she probably got real into it, disguised herself real well, trying to feign herself to be another woman other than Jeroboam's wife. But guess what? The spirit of the Lord revealed unto Ahijah that, look, this Jeroboam's wife feigning herself to be another woman. <laughs> so, the point being, the reason why I, gra I grabbed that scripture through the spirit is because the Lord can put the spirit on a certain man to see through your BS, man, you know? So there's no point to fake the funk with men. 
But just keep it real with your how about you shy, keep it real with yourself, and keep it real amongst the body. You know? Nonetheless, let me go back to Sirach 23. That was just a little, you know. And also Wisdom of Solomon 7. Wisdom of Solomon 7 chapter, what does it say? That the Lord, that wisdom, uh, knoweth the reasonings of men. So through the spirit of wisdom, you can, you can almost tell what a brother is thinking, you know? <laughs> Man, there have, been time, there have been so many times amongst the brothers when I've been fellowshipping, and a brother just knows exactly what I'm thinking, man. All right? I, brother asked me, hey, you want something to drink? I'd be like, nah, I'm good. I, you know, Jake trying to take the humble route. And a brother bring the drink anyways, man. You know? Why? Because ultimately, that's the spirit of the Lord. You know? That's the spirit of the Lord moving on, brothers, to peep through shit. Okay, even though I'm saying I'm good, I'm straight, which I was straight, but in the back of my mind, I know damn well I did want to drink, you know, but I was trying to be humble, you know what I'm saying? And as well, there have been times where I think a thought, I just think a thought about a brother, and next thing you know, a brother look at me, you know? Why? Because that's the spirit of the Lord, man, you know? So there's no point to fake the funk, man, all right? Don't fake the funk with your how about your mouth shot. The Lord can see through all that, all right? Now, this is Sirach Ecclesiastes 23. And 20, it, it says, he knew all things er ever they were created, so after, so also after they were perfected, he looked upon them all, all right? So it says, the Lord knew all things that ever were created. So the Lord, he knows you. He knows your spirit. He knows how you get down, man. All right, so there's no point to fake the funk. So don't do things to be a man pleaser at the water, Aki. Don't do things to be a man pleaser. Do things to please Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you know, this is Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 12, it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. So, Apostle Paul is saying, you didn't just obey when I was around. It says, but what? But now much more in my absence. So you're supposed to be even more, 10 times more on point in the spirit when brothers are not around. Because you don't have a brother to check you. So you got you to gotta move with a certain caution in the spirit, much more, even when brothers aren't around. Because, like I said, you don't have a brother to check you. So I'm going to read that again. Philippians 2 and 12. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, it's like it. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, man. I like the scripture, like it said, much more in my absence. So, and guess what? You know, I wrote this down through the spirit. It takes integrity to do the right thing when men are not watching. But the Lord is always watching. Right? The Lord is always watching. Okay, let me get this scripture real quick. I think it's in Psalms. It's verse through Proverbs 20 and 12. The hearing ear and the seeing eye. The Lord hath made even both of them, <laughs> okay? So if the Lord made ears, does he not hear himself? If the Lord made eyes, can he not see himself, man? All right, and let me get that scripture because there's a scripture like that. I don't really know how to search it, but I know I know it's like along those lines. You know, he that made the ear hath, shall he not hear? He that made the eye, shall he not see? Or if we paraphrase it, you know? So there's no point to try to fake the funk. Or to, or to be a man pleaser when at the end of the day behind closed doors you're not really about that life all right this is um psalms 94 and 9 he that planted the ear it says shall he not hear he that formed the eye shall he not see you know that's the point of that right there okay the lord the lord made the ears the lord made eyes he's gonna see he's gonna hear he knows your thoughts, man. Okay? That's why the scriptures say he knows. Um, oh, let me get that real quick. Ooh, man. Ooh. Ooh, man. Let me get this scripture real quick. Let me get this scripture. This is Luke chapter 16 and verse 5. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But ye how about some y'all side knoweth your hearts. Ooh. That which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in sight of the Most High. Yeah. Okay. So Jake, a lot of a lot, most of the stuff that Jake is highly esteemed amongst Jake, it's an abomination before the Lord, man. All right. But the the main point that I wanted to get that scripture where it says what, ye are they 
which justify yourselves before men. You know, you're trying to justify yourself. You're trying to make yourself to seem like something you're not. Oh, yeah, I only did this because such and such and such and such, you know, dust and dust. <laughs> like the scripture say, dust and dust. You know, you're justifying yourself before man. So man could be so you can get man's approval. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep. Come. But the Lord knows your heart. The Lord knows your heart, man. That's why it's important to not do things to please men, but rather please you how about Shemel Shai, man. Ain't no point to fake the funk, man. Because the Lord, he sees everything, man. The angels are constantly watching. That's the thing. You know, you know, you look at a chariot, you be like, oh, there goes a the chariot. And you might rejoice in the spirit, but at the same time, they're over there taking watch. You know, they're taking report, man. Okay? So we got to be on our best behavior to the best of our abilities. All right? This is the second Ezra's 16, starting at verse 61. Ooh, man. Let me start at verse 53. 2nd Ezra 16 and 53. It says, Let not the sinner say that he have not sinned. For the Most High shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which say it before the Lord's power and his glory I have not sinned. All right? Verse 54, Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. <laughs> Man, which spake but the word, let the earth be made, and it was made. Let the heaven be made, and it was created. In his word were the stars made, and he knoweth the number of them. He searcheth the deep, and the treasures thereof. He hath measured the sea, and what it containeth. Okay? It says, he hath shut the sea in the midst of the waters, and with his word hath he hanged the earth upon the waters. All right. Verse uh, 59. All right. It says, He spreadeth out the heavens like a vault. Upon the waters hath he founded it. In the desert hath he made springs of water and pools upon the tops of the mountains that the floods might pour it out from the high rocks to water the earth. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath, life, and understanding. All right, verse 62. Yeah, here's the point. Yeah, and the spirit of the almighty power, which made all things, searcheth out all hidden things. Slock you up. bear with me. Slock you up. All right. It says, yeah, and the spirit of the almighty power, which made all things and searched out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what you think in your hearts. Even them that sin and would hide their sin. Therefore have the Lord exactly searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men and your own sins shall be your accusers. In that day, what will you do, or how will you hide your sins before you howl by Shmuel Shai and his angels? Okay, so the Lord and the angels are constantly watching. All right, this is um verse sixty-seven. Behold, you howl by Shmuel Shai, him or the Most High Himself is the judge. Fear Him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them, forever. So shall you have Bashmiel Shai lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. That's right. So the message, the moral of the story is repent. You know, repent, man. So you can see the kingdom. This first go around. And you don't eat a missile. You know, because the Lord knows exactly what's on your mind. He knows your intentions. He knows your thoughts. So don't try to fake the funk and don't even try to front to yourself, man. Don't even try to lie to yourself because the Lord already knows what's going down in your mind, man. More than you know yourself. More than you know yourself, man. Before you even say a word, the Lord knows what you need. The Lord knows what you're going to ask him. You know, before you even speak, man. That's Psalms 139. All right. And no matter where you're at, the Lord could find you. The Lord could see you. Really, nothing, technically, nothing is really ever lost. Nothing is really ever lost, you know, because the Lord knows exactly where everything is. <laughs> you know, so it's not lost. You know what I'm saying? Technically, okay, this is Psalms 139, 
starting at verse 1. To the chief musician of Psalm of David, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. So the Lord knows when you're getting up. The Lord knows when you're laying down. And he knows your thoughts all the way from the heavens, man, afar off. Verse 3. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. <laughs> and when you go into that word acquainted, a lot of times in the Hebrew, the word there is yadai, which means to know. All right. So the Lord, he knows all of our ways, man. The Lord knows what triggers us. The Lord knows what makes us happy. He knows what makes us sad. All right. And that's why them demons, they try to, you know, go off your triggers, man. All right. Because them demons, they work for you. You know, and they know what they know what your weaknesses are, man. OK, that's why, you know, the Lord, the scripture say what? Thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, man. The Lord knows your weaknesses, you know. It's so basically the Lord knows everything, man. All right. <laughs> In some, all right, all right, and when I say in some, I'm saying in S U M, in some, like as in all in all, the Lord knows everything, all right. It says, verse 4 There is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, Yahweh, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too wonderful for me, it is high, I cannot attain unto it. Yeah, that's why the Lord said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As the heavens is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, man. All right, the Lord is far out, above our understanding. All right, verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? So basically, where can I run to to get away from you? <laughs> or where can I hide to get away from you, Lord? You know, that's like a rhetorical question, pretty much. You can't run, neither can you hide from the Lord, man. All right, you could run, you could hide from man, you could run from man, but you can't run or you can't hide from Yahweh Bashim al Shai. The scriptures say that um, uh, the Most High's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding the most secret parts, you know? All right, verse um, 8 If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, which hell meaning the grave, so if you go underground, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Meaning that, you know, you think, okay, the darkness is going to cover me round about. But it says, even the night shall be light about me. Meaning that the Lord could see you as if it was broad daylight. All right. Um, It says, yeah, the darkness hideth not from thee. But the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the night. It's like it. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. All right. It says, for thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. So the Lord could see you even in your mother's womb. Okay. Esau is late to that party. You know, because you, because you, um, um, you know, when you go through that thing with the babies. All right. Where you, the Esau does a little, he, he rubs the, the, uh. The substance on the woman's stomach. And then, you know, they're able to see like an image of the baby. Well, guess what? Esau, you're late to the party, man, because Lord Ben had that technology. <laughs> you know, that's just already planted within him. You know? It says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned as, which as yet there was none of them. All right. So, yeah, that's really the point, man. All right. Let me see if I can find this last scripture, Lord willing. All right. This is uh, Jeremiah 23 and 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. So the Lord's spirit fills the heavens and the earth, man. So the Lord can see all that, man. So moral of the story, we don't do things to please men. Okay, we do things to please Yahweh Bashim al Because at the end of the day, you know, the Lord can tell when you're faking the funk, man. All right. So Lord willing, this video was edifying. 
and sparked fear in brothers and sisters, you know, to uh, fear Yahweh Bashim al Shah. All right, so Shalom, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim al Shah, Bashim Chakradash. All right, Yahweh Bashim al Shah, Bashim Chakradash, Brakatham to the elect. Double honors to the elders and apostles, a great Muslim, everyone. Peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball.